Hello and welcome to Insights, the podcast with your host, Joe Parnay. Join me in this deep exploration of our personal journeys from ambition to meaning, where we stop living life fast and start living life deep. This is a journey of waking up and realizing that our lives have never been about us, but about others. True success leaves positive ripple effects on other souls. I believe that success needs to be redefined from our own personal ambitious endeavors to be redefined as the value that we leave and give to others around us. Join me now as we begin this journey to deeper connections, even more fulfillment, some fun, curiosity, life, love, and all good things. Your deeper journey from ambition to meaning starts right now. Hello, it's Joe here. Welcome to episode seven. So glad you could join me. So let me ask you, have you ever had any experiences in life where, this is like a dumb question, right? Like, have you had experiences in life where you've been incredibly frustrated, where someone has frustrated you or something has frustrated you or or you've lost your wallet or you've lost your phone or your, your computer's breaking down, you know, life is breaking apart and we feel beyond frustrated and then you get stuck in this mode or this mood and then we have difficulty getting out of it or it takes ages to get out of it have you ever had that experience or have you ever had the i'm sure you have we all have right (laughs) you had ever had the experience of being in the car on a gorgeous sunny like stunning day 24 degrees no wind blue skies just like life is just gorgeous it's one of those days where it feels good to be alive And a certain song comes on the radio and your spirits are lifted and your mood is elevated and you're feeling phenomenal. Have you ever had that experience? Have you ever had the experience of anything in between or when you walk into a a certain work environment, you know, the vibe of the place gives you a certain experience? Well, if you can relate to anything I've just shared with you, I'm going to show you how it is that we create these experiences because we actually create the experience. It's easy to say, oh, it's the song that uplifted me. Uh, It's easy to say, it's that person over there that frustrated the crap out of me. That's why I feel this way. Or the frustration of losing my wallet or whatever. It's because of the wallet being lost that I feel frustrated. It's easy to blame or to actually say that the external things have actually created the feeling on the inside, but it's actually not. We've created the experience of the experience from the inside out. And what I want to share with you is that there are fundamentally three questions that we are asking ourselves. And I know that in in episode two, I, I spoke about three questions, but these are three completely different questions that are based on focus. You see that when we are actually experiencing frustration, joy, anything in between, anger, um, thrill, uh, excitement, uh, sadness, any of these things, it's because of a combination of three specific areas that we focus on, three specific areas that we focus on. In in the thousands of people that I've coached over the last decade and a half, these three focusing questions I've used so many times to help people unstick themselves from situations where they seem to not be able to let go of the frustration or let go of the feeling that they don't like to feel. And it's because of these three questions. So let me share with you what they are and then we can explore how we can use them in our everyday life. So whenever we're experiencing anything, we're focusing on one of three areas. In fact, we're focusing on all three of these areas, and they're based on three questions. And the first question is, are you focused on self or others? So when we're experiencing something negative, something that doesn't feel good, that feels emotionally very ordinary, let's just go back to the frustration example. In the coaching that I've done in all these years, like 99.9% of the time, the client is focusing on themselves. So when there's a situation going on that's really ordinary emotionally and you're feeling really crap, you're not focusing on others. You're focusing on self. So that's the first question. And I'm going to go deeper into this in the next few minutes. So the first question is, what do you focus on, yourself or others? The second question is, what are you focusing on, the past, the present, or the future? And the third question, which I reckon is so powerful and so simple, so elegantly simple yet powerful, is the third question is, Are you focusing on what's missing or are you focusing on what you're having? So let's go to the car scenario. You're driving, convertible, roof down, 24 degrees, no wind, blue skies, 
gorgeous day, great time to be alive. It feels amazing. Um, am I focusing on self or others? Well, as that song comes on, Uplifting My Spirit, I don't know about you, but I won't be focusing on myself. I'll be focusing on others. And what I mean by that, I'll be thinking about the people in my life and who I'm grateful for. I'll be thinking about my wife, my sons, my friends, my clients, different people, depending on the context of where I'm at. I'll be focusing on something outside of myself, how good life is, how great, you know, having the gratefulness of, or the gratitude of just being pain-free or just breathing or having the fact that I can drive this convertible car in this blue sky day in one of the best cities in the world. I mean, really, that is just incredible. Whatever city you think is the best city in the world, I reckon it's Melbourne, but that's just me. And forgive me if I've offended anyone. <laughs> so, but this is the thing. We're focusing on others. The second thing is, are we focused on the past, the present, or the future? Well, in the car, in that moment, enjoying the uh, experience of the the vibe of the air and the blue sky and the sunshine and so on, we're going to be focusing on the present because we're right there in that moment experiencing that experience. We might even be thinking about um, you know, where we're going in, in, on that day, what, what's the purpose of our trip that day or whatever it might be. And the third question, what are we focusing on, what we're missing or what we have? Well, clearly in that moment, we're present to the moment and we're focusing on what we actually have, which is that experience in that moment. Now, if I do a flip, think about a situation when you're frustrated, when you're peed off and you're not feeling all that great. Chances are that you'll be focusing on yourself, you'll be focusing on the past, and you'll be focusing on what's missing. There's a, on the balance of probability from a human condition perspective, if you're focusing on the combination of self, past, and what's missing, you're creating a very ordinary experience for yourself. And you can be anywhere. You could be at a concert that you love. You could be with someone that you care about. You could be doing a form of exercise or playing your favorite instrument or doing whatever it is that lifts your spirit. And if all you're focusing on is self only and the past only and what you're missing only, chances are, not absolutely, but chances are you're going to be feeling very ordinary. But if we flip that and change the combination of those three focus points and we focus on others, because as you can gather from my opening of, of, this, of what this podcast is all about, is this podcast is all about redefining success, is that success shouldn't be defined purely and only on our personal ambitious endeavors. Whilst that's very important, but if that's, all, if that's isolated and that's all it is, success is very superficial because that tends to lack long-term fulfillment. True success, as, as you've heard me say, is about the value that we bring to other people, the value that we bring to our market, the value that we bring to our family, the value that we bring to our community, the value that we bring to our sport or to our country or whatever the context is. So when we're focused on others, combined with focusing on the present and the future sometimes, and we're focusing on what we have, we can't help but feel great. Just the other day, I was um, helping my son who was uh, experiencing, let's just say, some frustration over some technological challenges on his iPad, okay? And he might be listening to this, so forgive me. I'm not going to say which one which one of my sons it is. Anyway, that's the whole risk of this podcast is I speak about people who are in my personal life who might uh, react a bit funny to what I'm saying. But I said to him, I said, "Hun, right now you're frustrated because you're focusing on what's missing. Have some gratitude for what you have right now. Have some gratitude that you have an iPad, that you have this family, that you have this home, that you have the food and the nutrition available to you within a heartbeat. There's so many things that we can be grateful for for what we have. But the moment we flip our focus or shift our focus to what's missing, welcome to the seeds of frustration. Welcome to the seeds of hell. And if by default, all we do is focus on what's missing in life. Now, this is me talking to you guys. This is not me talking to my 11-year-old anymore because <laughs> I, I think he has enough of me sometimes. But the point I want to make, and I don't talk to him like this all the time, my God, because this is just uh, fundamental stuff but that I sometimes share with him to help him with his emotions. But the point I want to make is that if by default, all we do is focus in, focus in life on what's missing and we're staring at our past and we're self-indulgent, I've just done the three focuses in reverse. You, I'm telling you, that combination is going to feel really, really ordinary. So anyone who's a victim of their own thinking, anyone that you know who's experiencing some kind of flatness. Now, let me just share with you another tip here. If someone's gone through a rough trot or something that they experienced something that hasn't worked out, in the heat of the disappointment of the emotions of that, 
you're not going to have this conversation with them because it's not fair, it's not right, and it's not, it doesn't serve that person. So I often say to people that when someone's, you know, um, either grieving the loss of something or someone or they're grieving the, the end of a relationship or their their careers come to an end or they're experiencing a physical injury of some kind, in the freshness of the awfulness of that, you're not going to come along and start talking about what are you focusing on, yourself or others and so on. You're not going to do that because that's being not very smart with all this knowledge. What we do is we sit with that person, we validate their experience and we sit with them and we share with them how much that must suck and how frustrating that must be. And we just be, we just be with them. When the emotional dust settles, this is a wonderful conversation to have because when we start consciously choosing to focus on others, focusing on the present rather than the past, and by the way, guys, as far as the timeline goes, there's nothing wrong with looking at the past. There's nothing wrong with reflecting on the past. I do that quite often. In fact, I'm, I think I reflect more in the past now than I ever have because uh, apparently as we get older, and I'm about to turn 50 sometime soon, you know, as, as we get older, we tend to have a lot more of the past to experience or reflect on. Think about it. I mean, an 18-year-old is, is very much focused on the future and what's coming up, the next date, the next opportunity, the next you know, job step, career, university degree, whatever it might be. But when we're 50, 60, 70 years of age, there's a lot of life that is past us. And for most of us on the other side of 50, there's less life left than compared to the life that we've had. I know that sounds really morbid, but we tend to reflect on the past and there's nothing wrong with that. The problem with the past is when we stare at it. And what I mean by stare at it is that all we do is think about the past. All we do is talk about the past. All we do is think about the past. All we do is bring up all the pain of the past and just stare at it. Well, all you're going to get is past FM. And what I mean by that is literally this works like a radio station. You know, if you're tuned into 91 FM and 91 FM plays classical music, all you're going to get is classical music. You ain't going to get rock music. And if you want rock music, you're not going to ring 91FM and say, Oi, where's my rock music? I've been listening to you all day and you have not played one piece of rock music. I mean, the guy there would say, excuse me, sir, but this is a classical music station and what you need to be doing is moving your focus, changing the dial to 104FM where they can play your blessed rock music. You see, it's, it's like that. So what happens is, we shift our focus. So if we're focusing on past FM, it means you can't be there for the people that you're with. You can't be there for the people that you love. You can't be there for the experience that you're currently having. So that's what I mean by past, present, and future. There's nothing wrong with thinking about the past, but if that's all we're doing and we're staring at the past and we're addicted to past FM, now you're going to be in strife. Emotionally, you cannot feel good about that. So this unique combination of focusing on others, focusing on the present or the future, and focusing on what you have, man, that makes a big difference in terms of how we feel. And I trust that you're digging this. The only thing I find weird about um, doing a podcast like this is I don't have a live audience to give me immediate feedback on what they're getting out of this. So I trust this is making sense. <laughs> I trust that it's making sense. So if we just go back to the old victim mentality where we focus purely on ourselves we're staring at the past and all we're doing is putting, and by the way, when we're staring at our past, staring at the past, not reflecting, not just temporarily thinking about it, but when we're on the past full on staring at it, we're going to be automatically focusing on what's missing because whatever happened in the past is in the past and it's not going to be here now. So we're automatically defaulting to what's missing. I actually reckon out of all those three questions, that third question is the most powerful one. And you can catch yourself out any time. If you want to bring more gratitude into your life, and it's been proven scientifically, and I'm being serious here, I've been proven, it's been proven scientifically, the massive benefits that gratitude has on our biology, our psychology, our emotional intelligence, our emotional range, our spirit, our soul, just having gratitude. And one of the ways of, of flipping from non-gratitude to gratitude is by simply stop focusing on what you're missing and focus on what you have. You know, there's a, um, a meditation um, thingy that we... Um, we, we used to play for the boys when they would go to sleep at night, our sons. And I love one of the meditations there where the fellow on the, on the app says, he says, um, every breath that you breathe is a new breath. And the breath you're about to breathe is a brand new breath, a breath you have never breathed before. 
And guys, you know, the day well, I don't, I don't want to I don't want to get all, all all too deep on you here while you're perhaps driving your car listening to this, but I've got to tell you that uh, you know, one day the last breath will come. It's just that you and I won't know when it is. But how's that for a thought? That the next breath you've never breathed before. It's a brand new breath. Every breath is unique. They might seem the same, but there's subtleties and there's differences. So that's a fundamental way of focusing on what we have, our breath, focusing on what we have, our body, focusing on what we have. Living in Australia, if you're an Australian listening to this, or living in a any part of the world where you deem yourself lucky, well, I'm from Melbourne, Australia, and I deem myself very, very lucky to be living here in all of its glory. I just think it's phenomenal. Now, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but hey, you know, that's just how I feel. That's just the way I look at it. So the point I want to make is, do you spend more time focusing on what you're missing or are you spending more time on what you have? And my tip here is start putting more effort and energy and focus and attention in what you have. That means through what you think about. It means through what you talk about. It means on what you um, tend to bring up in conversations with friends and family or people that you care about uh, deeply. You know, it's, it's, it's just a fundamental thing, isn't it? Just that, that one question can shift the dial of your metaphorical emotional radio station in a heartbeat. So to sum up our conversation today, and I trust that you're digging and loving this, and 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 please, you know, make com- I'd love to hear your comments because uh, I'll come back to the recording of this podcast, of course, and would love to see your comments on what you're learning from today. And some of you on this call might be clients of mine who have heard me have this conversation with you many times, and maybe perhaps you've picked up on a key distinction. I'd love for you to share that. So if we're focusing on ourselves. We're focusing on the past only, and we're focusing on what's missing. You're guaranteed to have a very ordinary emotional experience of any moment. It could be a moment that's really crap, or or, or even if it's a moment that should be celebrated and phenomenal, but yet emotionally we're feeling disengaged. Now, there's lots of reasons why we would feel emotionally disengaged, and this podcast, this episode, is covering off on one of them, and that is these three prong focus areas. Instead, if we start focusing on others, start focusing on the present and focus on what we have, it completely changes the way we feel. So I trust and hope, guys, that what I've been sharing with you today is something that I'm sure you agree is something immediately applicable, immediately something. Share this podcast with someone that you care about so they can hear what I have shared with you today. Because sometimes, you know, it's really funny, you know, um, I remember as a kid, you know, my dad would be telling me to do certain things. And uh, I wouldn't listen, you know, when I was 17, 18, 19. But if you got someone else in who would say the same thing and uh, someone who I um, uh, held up, you know, who I respected in a different way, I would listen to what they said. So sometimes maybe you've been having this conversation with other people. I don't know. But sharing this with other people perhaps maybe might add value and help them in some way in how to manage the way they feel about their experiences. So there you have it. That's episode three and i trust that you've enjoyed it what are you focusing on because fundamentally these three focus questions self or others past present or future on what you're missing and what you're having those three focus areas come under the the uh the grand title of what we focus on is what we get to the exclusion of everything else what we focus on expands and what we stop focusing on ceases to exist. So if we're focusing on others, we can't focus on ourselves. We can't focus on two radio stations at the same time. We can only focus on one radio station at a time. It's impossible to hear 91 FM and 104 FM. It's impossible to focus on ourselves and others. We're focusing on one or the other. It's impossible to focus on the past and try to have a hold on the present. It's impossible to be grateful for what we have if all we're doing is focusing on what we're missing. What we focus on expands. So when we focus on what we have and we're focusing on the present and we're focusing on others, it enriches and deepens our experience. What we stop focusing on ceases to exist in that moment. So if we're not focusing on the past and we're focusing on the present, we can't experience the past whilst focusing on the present. If we're focusing on others, we are not going to become or be self-conscious by focusing on ourselves because we can only focus on one or the other. Because what we stop focusing on ceases to exist in the experience of the moment. If we're focusing on what we have, we can't focus on the past. So it's one or the other. And it's as simple as that. Yes, it is, as far as focus goes. And we're conscious beings. We're the only living um, animal, I guess you could say, the only living being on the planet 
that has got the ability to think and the ability to create meaning and the ability to contribute significantly to the quality of its experiences. And I trust and hope that today's episode has helped you cover off on one of those. So thank you so much for being here today. I've thoroughly loved enjoying, loving this. And um, and and please, as I said, share this with other people and uh, and feel welcome to make comments on this podcast so I can glean from you what you've been loving and learning and digging. Enjoy and I'll see you We'll see you. You'll hear from me next week in the next episode, episode four, coming up soon. Talk soon. Bye for now. I'm Joe Pane, and you've been listening to Insights, the podcast. If you haven't yet, subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. You can now follow my insights on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'm looking forward to being with you again very soon in the next episode of Insights, the podcast.